Hello and welcome to Wolford Weekly, episode 103. Third week in a row, I'm naming, numbering the episodes. Mm, just so people can keep up. So they say. can see how dated we really are <laughs> yeah. and how old we are. That's, um, do you want an uninteresting fact? You just burst yes. into my head. <laughs> oh, good. Um, that's the reason why uh, Vince McMahon doesn't name, number WrestleManias anymore. Because he doesn't they want... look old. Because mm-hmm. it makes it look like an old product. Mm. There you go. <laughs> That's what we are. That's what we are, a wrestling podcast. Old, old and regular. <laughs> yeah, like prune juice I drank earlier would prove that. That's right. I mean, this week on EastEnders, it's like, in the sta- it's like this week was anniversary week because yeah. they were throwing out every reference in the world ever that they could. Well, it's like the the, the uh, storyline is when the writers thought to themselves, oh, these are all the things we want to put in anniversary week. There's and no time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, basically the producers said, no, we want to do a big stunt. Yeah. A big... We want to do clever storyline yeah. where we're flashing forward and flashing back. Mm. So there's no time for photos of yeah. Michelle. None of that. No, no, no this nostalgic trip. <laughs> no, not any of that. So they, they had their turn this week. They did. To do a few throwbacks. And they really went with it. They really did. They took that train and rode it. Mm. And those photos, I mean, we have to address the Michelle. Original Michelle was shown season two. Tully, mm-hmm. but not one sign of older Michelle. So that was interesting. Yeah. Um, is this a sign of things to come? Is it going to be Michelle that gets killed on the boat? <laughs> what, they bring back Sue Tully? And then Just she... a killer. <laughs> <laughs> on green screen separately. Yeah. Oh, wow. the actress wasn't there. They could do like the stunt of her falling off the boat, like in slow motion on the, on the green screen. That'd be great. No. I'd, I'd tune in for that. And they also put a young like Todd Carty on Mark, original Mark's face as well. Yeah, they did. <laughs> And like gave him like shaggy hair. So that's that, fun. That's Grange Hill, Todd Carty. Oh, is it? Mm. Oh. I forget the character he played. We played a game about him being in Grange Hill. Know. Do you remember that way back? Yeah. I asked you if characters from East End, uh, actors and actresses from mm-hmm. EastEnders had been in Grange Michelle Hill. Michelle and Sharon have. Mm-hmm. No, that was the other Biker Grove, was it? No, Mich- no. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> See, this is, this is what the problem you had. You confused Biker Grove with Grange <laughs> Hill and it was a calamity from that moment on. Nothing's changed. But yeah, nice photoshopping was going on. We saw Lou Bill. Mm. Oh, it's fun. Ethel. We saw the original owners. We saw Den and Angie as well. Mm-hmm. That's something that leads Casually to Casually posing later. in front of their <laughs> lovely <laughs> stairs. In front of a, a professional photographer. <laughs> Do you notice they used um the uh, the real Angie and not the original cast Angie for the photos? Oh, yeah, that would have been funny, wouldn't it? Yeah. If they used the original, original one. Mm. They never not... made it to air, everyone. Yeah. Pearl. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's a little story for anyone who... Anita Dobson was actually the second choice to play Angie. And they had already filmed scenes with the... Mm, and did a cast photo. Yeah, with the original actress. Yeah. And they thought she didn't really fit the It was the character. Pearl. I can't remember what Dan, Dan was called, but Angie was called Pearl. Mm. And Sharon was called Tracy, I think. Yeah, but no, it's not changed. our Tracy. Not the Tracy that I did a YouTube no. video on that you can see on our YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, and big nostalgic trick. And obviously mm. there was also divorce papers that we'll talk about later in the week. But we're, um, we'll, we'll talk, we'll talk about... about it later on the show. If we, we talk were... about it later in the week... Oh, yeah, I don't know what This will be a very long podcast. The week of EastEnders. Um, <laughs> Um, but we're going to start off with what was, you know, we talk about all that nostalgic old EastEnders. Mm. This storyline with Whitney and Leo is like, this is modern Hollyoaks EastEnders. Oh, right. Because he's in the ceiling. Because they're jumping looking. the shark. <laughs> <laughs> the background music was back. Didn't mind it when he was staring at her. Rat boy Leo. But um, yeah, he's in her attic. Mm. Scratching the drywalls. <laughs> Marge comes along and whacks him with a broom. Mm. And Dot's um, attic isn't very kept. I thought it was fairly empty, considering was, the number of years she's lived. Cobwebby. Yeah, but she must have had some old, like, old Tom and Ethel's trinkets and bits oh, yeah, and pieces. Yeah. You know, she must have accumulated. If you look at our attic, we've got quite a few nonsense things in our attic. Ours is full. And we've only been here, what, seven years? Mm. So Dot must, I would have thought it would be much more full. She's very organised. Perhaps as Sonia, that's the influence in her life. Mm, declutters. Wouldn't it be funny if um, Leo found something up there, like something that proves that Nick killed someone else or something? Well, that evidence. Nick, Nick had put up there, like, years ago. Oh, oh um... So, no, it should be something more incriminating for Whitney or something, shouldn't it? You should find something that... Whitney's a good girl. She hasn't done nothing. Well, she's a good girl, but she's also incredibly naive and doesn't really have much common sense. <laughs> because she's just, one after another, just thinks that everything she's doing is the right idea. And mm. she wants this acceptance as well. Like, she fooled Leo into kind of forcing her to apologise in the middle of everyone in the Vic. Mm-hmm. And she it... lost her... Um book to him well she lost her book last week yeah. to him, didn't she so that was her first mistake because no, she, thought... she agreed to meet with him didn't she and go to the grave yes because the charges have been put against kush there's cctv footage that only incriminates put kush push pushing kush <laughs> and um and as much as gray can give his goodwill and uh, solicit for free for kush's yeah, cause gray's a good guy he's family man yeah everyone's friend perfect yeah wouldn't dare her 
hair on anyone's head. If you need legal advice, graze your man. But not family legal advice. Uh, no, no, no. He doesn't, <laughs> not to Linda. He doesn't do family. <laughs> he doesn't do family <laughs> law. No, he only does. In, well, Gbh. Yeah, what would that be? I crime. Suppose? It's a crime. That would crime be crime law. law. <laughs> I don't know. He, he seems to specialise in a, quite a wide, wide range, though. But, but not family. Of, no. Doesn't do family he law. He can't do everything for free, can he? Bless him. He's got that big house to keep. Well, he, likes, he just gives out advice, though. He's just so kind, isn't he? <laughs> He's just so, so kind to everyone. Mm. Um, Leo took her to the grave and, like... I don't know what his plan was. He wanted her to admit that she was lying. Mm. But he, like, basically pushed her into the Vic, like, while holding her hostage. And said, go on, then admit it. So it's pretty obvious, Leo, that no one's going to believe you. But he's, again, he's gone... He's reverted back to this childlike Leo. The one I said last week that I kind of liked and missed. And mm. that is that, in his hot mind, he's really excited and loves the idea that he's right and... Yeah, he gets this childlike thrill and you can see his like his face light up when he thinks that what he's doing is right. In his mind, he's right. Mm, and clever. But he's not clever, though, is he? No, he's because not. But he's... in his mind, he thinks he is. Mm. And Whitney has um, outmaneuvered him this time round. And so now all the charges have been dropped because Jack said, now he's shown his true colours to everyone in the pub. There's no way his case would ever go forward. I love how Jack court. knows every case. I know. <laughs> Off by heart. He just goes to people door to door and just says, oh, by the way, your case, <laughs> you're no way you're going to get that sorted. So he's very busy, but at the same time, never working. No, he's, he offers support as well yeah. to um, fellow police recruitees. You know, I really thought they were going to do something with Jack way back when he was being introduced back into the force. And you saw him with that. Someone oh, who, was who was under him. No, no, no. The guy who was under him oh, yeah. used to get Jack's coffee and now Jack was getting his coffee. And I thought, oh, I thought we both thought, didn't we? That, you oh, know, yeah, I forgot about that. Mm, Jack's is just going to be like Jack because going... Jack didn't like it did he that he someone who he used to be belittled was now ahead of him he, he felt like he, he fell down the ladder and like he didn't it mm. was almost like they weren't going to let he didn't want to climb it back up again you thought that this was going to be a very short term prospect but now, now he knows every single case well, now he's, he's well in. He's got his foot back into the door of the police force, and he knows exactly everything about everything, mm. doesn't he? He is he is the Met. <laughs> he is the police. Never in uniform either. Well, he's a detective, so he wouldn't be. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you, you don't watch enough Taggart or it's no, better Morse know to know these things. Rubbish. <laughs> um, we had like a community spirit of sticking up to um Leo. Yep, the community and rallied around. Chucked him out, and Mick like helped um Whitney, and obviously Linda wasn't best pleased. Well, yes. Yeah, so you saw Mick stand up to Leo uh, for Whitney and you kind of didn't really understand why Linda was looking a bit concerned. But mm. then you realise later, I suppose we'll talk about this with Linda's story, that Linda was a bit jealous that Mick stood up for Whitney, but Mick hasn't really been able to step up for Linda. So that was understandable. Mm. And it was made a bit worse that later on, when he then visits Whitney in her room, she says, well, this is where I feel safest, my bedroom. <laughs> and then they kind of give each other a very lingering and long look at one yeah. another. And there's, oh, hello. The Whitney and Mick story is back, is it? The, no, no. The, mm, the Mickney story continues. Gross. <laughs> but um, I mean, how did he, speaking of Leo, because he's obviously watching all this and he's watching Rat her boy. get changed and he's watching her lie on her bed, watching with his BBC eye. I player. I mean, it's also very convenient. <laughs> yeah, you can imagine. <laughs> it's also very convenient that um, she, there's that hole in the roof as well, that perfectly he must have made that eye-shaped hole. score. Yeah, but it's like he did it. It's like a cartoon again. Like he got a hacksaw <laughs> and kind of made this perfect shaped eye. Mm. But it was very spooky. Like, it when was. You saw it, the shot. it was very good when they like revealed it, I guess. Mm. It was good mm. because, like, why are they showing the ceiling? They never show ceiling of any set. <laughs> I bet the set design is really like, oh, I have to put a ceiling on every time. Blue blooming ceiling, blooming storyline. It's like a really weird design on the roof as well, like a compass. Who, who did that? Yeah, I think. Well, is that something Dots created or <laughs> Ethel <laughs> years ago? <laughs> Like got Dr. The... Leg before he can't do it. <laughs> it's like those um, stickers you put on the wall saying live life love. Mm. <laughs> like, like, maybe... Who's done that? I don't know. Yeah, I think that's a Whitney thing, don't you? Like, oh, like... yeah, because she's quite artistic and fashionable. She's quite artistic. She that's her compass. That's her moral compass. Sounds very Whitney. She just yeah. paints it without asking. Dog. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll do what I want. <laughs> she just lays on her bed, looks up and thinks, oh, I'm feeling really southerly mm. today. I mean, how long is Leo going to be up there? Because there's no toilet, there's no food. Now, He's going to get backache. Yeah, this is this is the bone of contention. How did he get in the attic? Does he visit the attic on a regular occurrences or is he actually living in the attic? Yeah, he must be. He must be very quiet on his feet. But, but let's for start off with how he got in there. Is there an, a secret entrance somewhere or did he get in through just the front must door? Must have been through the house. I mean, we know that the residents of EastEnders like to leave their door, doors unlocked. Mm. It's, it's, you know, Stuart broke into Jack's house... When Lit Rainey was living there, the mm. bills I mean, always leave the back door open. I mean, Leo did go into Dot's house once when they were dating, remember, and they went into her room. 
mm. or the downstairs living room. So maybe he had got a key cut, like in secret, <laughs> maybe. But that's he's a bit weird. Real forward planning, isn't no, that it? That is like, Leo. He is a I bit have, odd. Mm, but that's that's that's, that's taking... a bit more controlling, actually. That's more of a grey move than a Leo move, maybe. Yeah, but maybe he they did consider it like as 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 a prospect that one day he would need to manipulate mm. Whitney in a in a in a form of staring at her and finding out her information because that's what he's doing, isn't it? Do you think he's watching her because he's obsessed with her? Well, or... he's like become unhinged, doesn't he? Because mm. they showed us that shot of his his eye twitching when he was looking through the peephole, and then you saw him in the attic, and he looked into the camera and started twitching. <laughs> So I don't know, like, what was he looking at? Well, Whitney, isn't it? But, like, whatever Whitney does, it's mm. a bit... Was it when she pulled her hair out? Because that's that's a thing now as well. It's like it was she... when she was in, like, a dressing gown on the bed, wasn't it? He got all, oh. he got all twitchy. All right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know what he's doing up there. How he's... You know, how has Sonia not noticed? Sonia noticed everything. But not if she, must have not heard she doesn't him. go in the attic unless she has you a know, reason to organise the attic. You someone walking around or crawling around above you. And that's why I call, her rat, call him Rat Boy. <laughs> That's that's my meaning. But that's, that's that's another thing. Does he spend all day, all night up he there? He must do because it must be hard to get into that house empty to hide up there and then not and have no one see you. But maybe she's got like or a smell you. Maybe she's got a few loose tiles and she just doesn't know about <laughs> them. I mean, Dot hasn't had her survey done yet. Perhaps that's what we're sh- they're gonna how they're gonna find him when she gets her finally gets her central heating in her house. They have to get a new boiler set in and like put pipes mm. around the walls and uh, you know Leo would know where to hide. Wouldn't it be cool if while he's up there, something happens to him and he gets stuck or trapped and he just dies up there? Well, they have like a fire. Not even a fire, just something in like in like three months time when the people come in, the council people, they just see his body up there. Oh, well, he just rots to death because yeah. there's no food or water up that'd there for him. That'd be good. It'd be really horrible, but that'd be like really creepy and weird. And that sounds like something from Jonathan Creek, doesn't it? It's mm. like how someone would die in a, a Jonathan Creek mystery. Yeah, but he just like stepped on a nail and slowly died oh, well, yeah. <laughs> or something. <laughs> What did you think he's or got his, or got his ankle trapped or something so he can't move, but he doesn't want to shout for help because mm. he doesn't want to get caught up there and he ends up dying. Do you think he wouldn't ask for help, though? I don't know. He'd have to. Plus, it would st- the stench. Yeah, that's true. But no, that would be good. That's what I mean. That would be, be interesting. Good. If if if, if she, like, everyone started going, ooh, mm. Tot, have you, something, have you, you know, dropped one or something? <laughs> oh, no one me, dear, no. That's really all there is to the story, though, really. He's just watching her through mm. the peephole. Big brother's watching. Well, big Leo. Mm. Well, not her brother. That's sick. <laughs> <laughs> right, moving on to the Panasars now. Because Suki still being sneaky. Sneaky Suki. Mm. I, there was a really good moment because she was eating cake and watching TV and chilling out because no one was in the house at the beginning of the week. And um, she heard the brothers coming home. So she was like, <gasps> and she quickly rushed off to like big B sick or ill Mm. in front of them and there was a really funny line where she mentions it's her birthday and she wants a birthday cake and Kira says oh yeah you've not been able to have cake in months have you Mm. and obviously she'd just been eating cake and the actress I don't know if it was written or what but she like looked around and like quickly brushed her chest just in case there was crumbs even though there wasn't (laughs) I thought that's like a really good little funny Mm. character trait that was so I don't know if that was written in or it's just like the actress doing a bit of yeah, improvised while the cameras were yeah that, that, was, that was funny I mm. like that she is sneaky isn't she old Suki she is sneaky manipulative yeah. bitchy two faced yeah. everything I like in a woman <laughs> <laughs> everything you look for it is mm. she also obviously was doing her two facedness with Ikra because mm. um, she wants like one final family meal because it's her last ever birthday yes, yes. on this earth and um, Vinny ends up inviting Ash which accidentally invites Ikra Ikra. And there's like some weird dynamic where Kirit sort of tells him like, no, Ikra can't come. You need to sort this out. Mm. And it, there's a really weird like relationship between the mum and Kirit. It's, it's almost like he knows that she's not sick. But I'm not sure if I'm oh, you reading reckon too he's, much he's into in, it. No, I don't think he knows. I really don't. Because he's Kirit gave Suki a gift of like the first picture of the market store. And all the brothers seemed quite keen and excited that she was going to enjoy it. And she kind of just shot them down immediately and said oh mm. we'll, we'll put these up in the office when you when you've finally sorted out the call center yeah, it's almost like she didn't want to think about her past or where they'd sort of come from well, well or, or, the, or the, the husband her husband that's yeah. right it's it like... was like a corner shop they used to own as a family or something mm. weird it's like yeah exactly something something so it, it makes me think that something in the past with the husband is mm. being swept under the rug as well but the boys the boys are more fondly remembering him than what she is so is she again is this a story that she's trying to manipulate them to remember their father in a way that she wants them to remember him yeah because we don't really know much about the father we assume he's dead 
Do we don't even know if he's alive or not, well, do we? We don't know. They've not, no. really, they've not really mentioned it. This was the first mentioning of him. I mean, is it another time. thing like Claudette and Vincent where Claudette, like, offed the husband but never told Vincent? Right. And he always loved his dad and wondered, what happened. is this the same sort of thing of Suki? Is she mm. sort of Cause, yeah, got Cla- rid of him? Because Claudette did kind of also badmouth mm. Vincent's dad in front yeah. of Vincent all the time. Um, so, yeah, it's maybe something similar. But she's never really, she's never outwardly talked about their father yet. No, she just this thinks she doesn't first... want to remember. Yeah. Yeah, this is the first indication that it's something, something that she she visibly wants them to know that she doesn't want them to remember something. Mm. She didn't really make an effort to hide her dissatisfaction of that picture. No. Um, but but the but the, the the brothers were visibly upset that she didn't like it. it was, again, mm. it was something that they were trying to introduce into her to try to be like, oh, you remember know, the good old days. Remember the good old days. The same as like with, with Ash. Like they they've introduced Ash back into her life, wanting her to. They want her to include Ash into their life. Mm. But Suki's taking a lot more convincing. Um, so the, the picture is the same, I guess, for me. Yeah. And she also doesn't like lilies or flowers. But that's what Ikra gave her. And like, she wasn't the well, most this... welcoming and warm to Ikra. No, so when Ikra went to this meal, did you? is it down to the religious thing? That they're two different religions? Cause yeah, that's there's cor- like a rivalry between... Reli- like, not a rivalry, but like an, an unwritten sort of thing like yeah a lot of family but do you think that's on. Suki's problem or is that one of another problem well, also the fact that she's a lesbian yeah, yeah. So or it, bisexual but but then why is she trying to build why is she consciously I don't know it, for me it feels like that Suki is only trying to build this bridge with her and Ash because she knows that Ash has some kind of hold on the brothers too and she's almost doing it to keep on the side of the brothers mm. so Suki doesn't particularly care to have this relationship with Ash she's only doing it so the brothers are still on her side yeah or it's just like Suki doesn't like the fact that she hasn't got Ash and that's something that she's some sort of power she's craving which she hasn't mm, got because the other three do kind of mm, bend over bow her. Down to her yeah and I mean the Ash best doesn't... um the best progression for the Panasar family this week was that the writers have given Jags no lines right did you notice that no I see saw that's it... where he works <laughs> and there was no Jags complaints this week and that's why just background he was just in the background just background amusement <laughs> I mean, Vinny was good this week. He he was yeah. kind of running around trying to sort things out. Mm. He made that lie up saying that his mum was really ill. So that's why Ash and Ikra can't really go. There's not going to be a birthday dinner now. Mm. And then you see Ikra. Suki was behind her. Sorry, Suki coming out. Yeah, Suki coming out mm. of the Minute Mart. Suki's playing um, her tricks again with Jean and Daniel as well. She's trying to get more information from yeah. them. Having a few drinks at the pub. Suki's like Jean's best friend. But Daniel mm. did seem a bit like, oh, no, I've got you. I've got your number. Mm. Daniel's wise too. Mm. so i think that maybe because we again we've learned the mortality of daniel this week um i think that we may see daniel perhaps mentioning something to Jean in, in the near future about suki just to keep an eye on her mm. just watch out what she's Final asking warning. about yeah there was also like a funny line when suki after the meal and after it left she didn't like her her cooking it wasn't for her well it wasn't again it wasn't Little dig there. it wasn't um a Sikh meal exactly it was, yeah. it was, uh, well, not to my taste is exactly what she said. exactly little but, dig but then she she appeased herself afterwards and kind of made herself to be a bit much more charming woman mm. and i think ash 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 sees through it do you think ash sees through it yeah. because i had a moment where she was at the table and she felt a bit guilty for almost penalizing her mum for the way she was giving shade to ikra but then when suki eventually did stop turning on the uh the guilt trip and the the dislike toward Ikra and started being a bit more polite and she even apologized she said oh I'm very sorry you know I didn't mean to give this impression mm-hmm. that I you know I, I dislike you I don't know there was a moment there where I thought oh maybe I'm being a bit harsh on my mum or was it a moment that she's she was so she still saw through her mum and that she she, mm. she I mean, I, I think she's even still questioning her cancer because mm. she knows that something's not quite adding up that. Well, that's right, because she's not showing any... I mean, look at Jean and Daniel and the fact that they're going for this chemotherapy mm. and, and how sick they're, they they are. And then look at Suki, yeah. <laughs> who doesn't look unwell at all. No, and she, she looks like Kiret's sister, not yeah. like her mum. Well, that's right. And and also she's just like, other than the, the occasional twinge where she kind of goes, oh, oh, and yeah, then kind of... <laughs> pretends yeah. to clap. Yeah, yeah, and falls slightly forward mm. onto the sofa. Like, it's, it's, it's always obvious that she's not unwell. 
Which kind of brings back to the point you said originally, is it is Kirit aware of it as well? And perhaps then he and... Yeah, there's I, something odd with... Mm. I don't know what it is, but there's something odd with that relationship. I'm expecting a conversation actually with Kirit and Ash. And perhaps Ash was... When she finds out or believes strongly that she knows that her mum is lying... Won't Kirit, believe her. Kirit, no, no, no. Kirit will say, I know this. I know as well. Or I, I've known... Mm. I've, I've noticed it too. And so then they struggle between Kirit and Ash to what they do next. Do they tell Suki that they know that she's lying or oh, do yeah, they he might to think like, oh, I've just been going along with it for her and for Vinny mm. or whatever because Vinny's quite like fragile, isn't he, he seems. Mm. And there was an interesting line when Ikra and Thingy left that she, Suki said to all three brothers, oh, you know, Ikra, we've got, you've got to get rid of her. She yeah, needs to go. Of, get, yeah, you have to. Get, and it's like, yeah, and she needs to go. Like, what does she mean? Because obviously when we were first introduced to these brothers, they had that weird warehouse where they kidnapped people and they oh, had those yeah. guys there yeah. who were watching like TV. Is that still part of like, does Suki know that part? Is Suki more like... Is she like the godmother? Yeah, is she more mob boss than yeah, we believe? Yeah, Because this whole like call centre thing seems a bit weird. Well, it sounds like, yeah, it sounds like it's a cover of something else doesn't yeah, it yeah or some sort of scam mm. or something and also are they are they still not going to do their their rat catching business I mean they've got they've got a laptop with a screensaver yeah. with the logo on it so I don't know if they've just got a load of fake businesses mm. I don't know something suspicious but like I don't know if it crew needs to fear for her life I don't know what other way they can get rid of. Oh, no, I don't. Do you think it's murderous intentions? I don't know. Really? You were just saying just now how it's becoming like Hollyoaks jumping the shark with the Leo story. That's ridiculous. <laughs> exactly. Would she really go that far just to, I don't know, it's a very to odd... win her, her daughter's love it's back? It's an odd phrase, isn't it? Like, she, you need to get rid. Well, I think get rid can just mean... like yeah, this it, is EastEnders. Yeah, but it's like if I said to you, like, oh, you say, oh, I finished the bag crisp, and I say, well, get rid of the bag then. You just forever. put it in the bin. But it doesn't <laughs> mean forever. No, in the land tip it was live there for hundreds <laughs> of years put but put put Ikra in a land tip and just let her live there for a hundred years that's fine by me mm, but you know she's gonna watch her back mm, i don't think it's murderous i think it's just going to be a few more manipulative nods here digs there mm. basically Ikra will come, almost break Ikra and ash up to make it look like that they're, they're naturally breaking up because that the tension between them so yeah Ikra will always be like oh your mum's fine and ash will be like no she's not you don't believe me and they'll just keep going on and on and on and on until eventually it will tear their own relationship maybe apart. suki will like plant ideas in ash's head that Ikra's being unfaithful or mm. she'll see Ikra talking to tina or something and she'll like create a story to make mm. ash question because Ash is, re- I think Ash realizes that she's being manipulated by Suki because she even says like, "You having cancer doesn't give you the the green light to manipulate me." Mm. So I think she's she realizes. So Ash is. Ash is being very aware and observant of everything Suki's doing. So if Suki wants to break up Ikra from Ash, she's mm-hmm. going to have to do it through the brothers, who Ash is a little bit more trusting of. Mm. Or at least she is with Vinny. <laughs> she lets Vinny in, and yeah. that's pretty much it. Suki's going to have to do her like best work to get Ash. Like, Jags, Vinny, they were easy. That's just a few manipulative cancer scares. Mm. But Ash, she's a different level. So she's going to have to do her top, top manipulating skills well, to Ash, break her. Ash just point blank doesn't believe her. Mm. And, she, and she's had no and reason. she's smart. I don't think it's necessarily just that she's smart. She's, well, she's always smarter been... than Jags. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. But it's also that she's just kind of, she's not been allowed to be part of the, the, the family. And it's only that Suki is desperately trying to bring her in now that Ash is aware of it. That, you know, why why have you suddenly changed your mind? Because mm. for so many years, you've pushed me out of the family. Now, why are you trying to pull me back in again? And um, I think Vinny and Jags, Jags is almost like, Jags is almost like the, the child who gets hit all the time. But like, has no 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 better so just wants to stay around because mm. there's nothing better on the you know she doesn't believe there's more or better things for him and Vinny's I think Vinny just doesn't want to be out of the crowd he likes to be part of the group so Karit is the most uh it's probably the as strong as Ash is so Karit and Ash are probably the two that you need to mm. are going to be the two who get together and um, solve it I'm not even sure that I like Kirit he's like very like sure he looks nice mm. <laughs> but like when he talks to people, I'm just like, you're. I don't think you're a nice person. Like, he's, no, he's not he's a nice not person. He's not got much 
going for him, has he? No, he's not a nice person. He's really he... quite horrible and he's quite aggressive, even with Vinny and Jags. And... But he's like his mum. Yeah. He is, he is his Very mother's. Horrible. He's his mother's son. But he's also the one that is going to be the only one who can destroy his mum, other than Ash. So mm. it's 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 going to be a struggle. Is it going to be a struggle between Ash and Kirit? Or is it going to be a, a tag team, Suki. a team together, yeah. that they will then eventually push Suki out? Interesting. I mean, she can only do this live for so long. Oh, God, yeah. So well, she had she's going to have months. to think of something else. Yeah, well, she's had four months. She extended it now. It was to... her last of her birthday. Yeah, so she's only got, well, she's got under a year now to try to think of why she's still alive after that. Also, this time next year, I can add her to the birthday list mentions. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So that's the early one that it. we know of. Could have done it this year. It was her birthday, 4th of February. There you go. <laughs> It's something to line up for the end of the show. It is. Right, we're going to go on to our game now, and then we'll um, carry on the chat. One game this week, but it's an original, and it's a fan favourite. Not quite to the pinnacle of Halfway's Hat. No, nothing is. Second best. Martin's, it's an OG. Martin Fowler's five a day. Mm-hmm. Just like mine. Just like mine. Any new listeners out there, or any old listeners who want to brush up on their five a day skills... This is the rules. I'm going to give Ben a question or a statement, and he has to give me five answers to that said statement or question. There could be just five answers. There could be plenty of different answers, but he only has to give me five. Good. To fulfil his five a day. It's my favourite number. You like five, don't you? (laughs) Martin is at his store, ready Mm -hmm. to throw that fruit and veg at you every time you get one right. Soon to maybe be replaced by Peter Bill. Mmm. Oh, God, does it mean I have to change the name of the game? Yes. Did we ever play Martin Fowler's five a day when he went through the dark phase? Yes. Oh, but did you we? didn't change it. No, should have called it Ian Bill's five a day or yes. Shrimpy's five a day. Oh, yeah. No, Shrimpy didn't wouldn't look after it, would he? He was in the hump. He, little lady lump. Mm. So, are you ready to play then? Yes, I am. That's what I'm waiting Good. for. I know you just you just sat there impatient, <laughs> twiddling your thumbs. Okay, so here we go. The question is: So, the Queen Vic has had much going ons in its past. Mm-hmm. There's been weddings and birthdays gay and gay quizzes, thanks to Johnny in his glittery jacket. <laughs> but there's also been a few deaths. Yes, there has. Now, do you think in 30 seconds you could name five people who have died inside or, and here's a bit of a clue, <laughs> on, top on top of the Queen Vic? <laughs> okay? Max five Max different... Branning's characterisation yeah. died. So in 30 seconds, can right. six, there's six potential answers. Yep. Oh, oh, hello. If you can give me all six, <laughs> yeah. then you get... Martin as well as his fruit and veg. You, you get the full store. He just Plus gives it Martin. to you. Martin. Yeah, you get Martin. You get a rough tumble with Martin. You get a, <laughs> night, a Sonia-esque night out with Ooh. Martin. Yeah. So 30 seconds. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. That's how long he lasts. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Rumours have been spreading. So here we go. 30 seconds. Name five people who have died inside or on top of the Queen Vic, starting from now. Okay. Tom Clements. That's correct. The Potman. Died Heart in attack the toilet. and toilet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then Watts. Got yep. hit her in the head. Murdered by Chrissy Watts. Then there was Gavin. No. Not Gavin, what's his name? The one that Stacey knocked over the head. Peggy's husband. Yeah. Is he not dying there? He does. Oh, yeah. What's his name? Gavin. Not Gavin. <laughs> anyway, next. Um, Abby. Yep. Sadly. Bradley. Yep. What's his name? Not Gavin. That's Three seconds. Begins with an A. Archie. Yeah. <laughs> Just in time. I was trying to do them in order as well. Did you notice that? You, well, you were very near until you got Archie. Yeah, Gavin was Cassie's love. Sharon's dad. Yeah. Allegedly. It's all very confused. Yeah. Yes, Archie. Yes. Archie, then Bradley, then Abby. Mm, but there was one between Bradley and Abby, and that's the elusive sixth one you can get. Oh, I thought that was six. No, that's five. So Tom the Potman died in the Vic toilets from a yeah. heart attack. Then what's murdered by Chrissy Watts with Pauline's mm-hmm. dog-shaped doorstop. Archie Mitchell died when... The Stacey hit him with the Queen Vic bust. Bradley and Abby fell off the Queen Vic roof. Mm-hmm. So in 2017, someone died oh, from an Sylvie accident in the bathtub. from an accidental <laughs> electrocuting in the bathtub. Sylvie Carter had died, and that would have been the complete set. Oh yeah. So you got five. So you got his fruit and veg, but you didn't get Martin's fruit. And oh, veg. For but you did get Martin's fruit and veg, but you didn't That's get what Martin's. What I was playing for? For just Martin. Yes. <laughs> Thirty well, seconds for Martin. <laughs> What's that game when you go into the cupboard and... Uh, I don't know. Th- I'm classier than that. 30 seconds in heaven or Sorry something, like isn't that. it? Mm. So I'm led to believe. <laughs> well, that's that's what they hear about Martin. <laughs> so uh, let us know how you guys got along at home. And that was Martin Fowler's Five a Day. So this is a heck of a coincidence that I did for our game... Martin Fowler's Five a Day. Mm-hmm. A question Only of... six answers. Yes. I said who had died... In or on the roof of the Vic. Mm-hmm. 
And this is honestly, I did not have any knowledge of this, and I don't think it was pre-recorded. No, sh- as secret, live, secret, secret. We did it five seconds ago. Aired as live. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. And well, well, I was wrong. I said there were six people, but actually there were seven, mm. as we learned from Sharon and Ian looking through old photos. Lovely how, Victorian lady. How Ian has a photo of that is beyond my knowledge. <laughs> Because that's just... Lou Bill. <laughs> Lou had photos Blame of everyone. Her. She just photographed people without the knowledge. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I apologise um, because I'm sure someone will pull us up on it and say, actually, there were seven people who died. Yes, the seventh one was the wife of the Bagstocks. That's who right. Who were the original owners of the Queen Thick. Mm. Same death as Sylvie. Uh, yes. Well, yes. Drowned, drowned no. in a bath. Sylvie was electrocuted in a bath. Oh, she's all drowned. Mm-mm. I guess she as electrocuted. well. Electrocuted. electrocuted and drowned. But I think she would have died from the electrocution, but and then, then drowned. But then pickled by the water <laughs> after drowning inside of it. So yeah, that's a storyline I wouldn't mind seeing. <laughs> what, drown? <laughs> oh, a spin-off of him killing his wife. The backstops in the Vic. The bag that's stops. why it's cursed. You see. I think the days of EastEnders spin-offs are long gone. Yeah, that would be a good one. The bags. We could make our own. Put it on our YouTube channel. What, film our own. Yeah, I'll play the wife. I'll happily do oh, that. I'll drown you. You can drown me. Okay. I'm about to shave my chest. I mean, Linda was in that same bath nearly getting drowned this week. The references of drowning. Of landladies. And landladies and, you know, the mirror, mirroring of other storylines that have happened in the past and mm. perhaps the future was worryingly uh, uncanny. It was, because I said last week, like, it feels like they're leading to Linda's end. Mm. And then this week it was like, yeah, we are. Yeah, every single... <laughs> L- literally are. Yeah. She's drowning, basically. Yeah, yeah, off the boat, because they keep going on about the bath and drowning and mm. more drowning. And the first landlady drowning. Yeah, Shirley squeezing water on her. They have even saw Shirley actually trying to drown Linda. <laughs> Not intentionally. Shirley had tried to drown her son in the past. Oh, yeah. Dino. Dean. She came up behind him, didn't she, when he was bathing? Yeah, and he did. It just slowly <laughs> squeezed his shoulders down into the water. So Shirley has history. We know there's drowning happening in the future, perhaps, mm. maybe, on a boat. We know the vic is cursed and no marriage mm. survives. No, no marriages. There's been divorces left, right and centre. Mm. I was going to say more indication of, but, you know, we've been reviewing EastEnders every week for a while now. 103 way... episodes, Ben. <laughs> 103 episodes. That's a lot of hours. I've got, I've got a Leo twitch when I say it. <laughs> um, but the way when Mel died with the car crash and they suddenly made her, like, she went from she was obsessive Mel and then there was a clear divide to insane Mel's gonna <laughs> do whatever the hell she does crazy Mel there was that same thing this episode on mm. Friday's episode all of a sudden Linda w- had changed like mentally she yeah. had changed almost within ep- an episode paranoia was kicking yeah, in and I thought it? this is Mel Owen writing again Mm-hmm. They, they've suddenly changed her flick flicked her to a thousand mm. ready for her to be killed off next week or in the week after well Sh- well sharon is chasing her <laughs> in the phone call to keanu because yeah, like this, par- keanu! this paranoia thing like it just i know she's been having drinking problems and loads of alcohol issues but it did seem like all of a sudden she's suffering mentally of this paranoia it I was really s- odd to be fair i think paranoia is very much linked to alcoholism i think that obviously it did yeah, but, overnight like this, be- it's... but it's not been overnight let's be honest has. she has no this she's alcohol drinking... storyline's been mile a minute when it has been it's been a roller coaster ride but um she you know she is drinking i mean she's making up for the non-alcoholism she had in the past mm. like she's really making up for it like she's really drinking like the littlest thing like she takes ollie out for ice cream she has an alcoholic drink mm. she goes on the tube she has a drink you know she, she talks to sharon has a bowl has a bowl yeah she she buys she tries to buy uh vodka has her car declined she trying to buy fish fingers for ollie burns them in the oven you know this is all going very wrong for her and she can you can i think she feels her life is crumbling around her and she's got no support from anyone as i said earlier like mick it seems to be showing more more support for whitney than he is now for linda yeah, which isn't given intentional. up kind of hasn't he well, i don't think he has though i think linda just feels like he has mm. and she feels like he's conspiring against her when she think when she finds out that he's trying to sell the pub which is probably the most sensible thing he could do yeah, but he could have talked to her first Mm. He could have mentioned it. I feel a bit sorry for Sharon that she wasn't like given the first refusal for the part. I know, normally she's in there, isn't she? Yeah. You, well, she didn't know. She got no money, she got problems, she got a baby on the way. <laughs> she got money, problems and babies. <laughs> but it was interesting, Kelly Bright did an interview on this morning, this uh, last week or this week, oh. talking about Linda. Right. It was really interesting hearing her talk about um, Linda's alcoholism because she said she was told about six months ahead of time mm. um, that it was going to happen. And she said that she, as the actress, not as the story writer, she had created a 
backstory for Linda about why she may be an alcoholic because she's always grown up in a pub her whole life when she was a daughter and all she's ever done which we've we've always said is she's always worked in a pub that's Mm. why would she suddenly be an alcoholic and I think she kind of thought that that doesn't really make sense so let me try and make it make sense yeah she knows that her dad died when she was quite young and she Kelly Bright said that in her head she's um said that her dad was an alcoholic Right. He died when she was young, but her mum, Elaine, I think her mum's Elaine, isn't it? Elaine kept it from her and it was never really told to Linda that her dad was an alcoholic. And right. that's why Linda saw her dad drinking casually. And that's why it's like a knock on effect to Linda now. Oh, I see. So, so she's, she's sort of given that as a sort of reason in her own head. Yeah, it's why she... Linda maybe That makes sense, doesn't it? Because like she does, she excuses her alcohol because she always says like, why am I not allowed to drink? I mm. can have a drink to relax. But she's now becoming dependent on her alcohol and she, again she doesn't see that as a, as a problem so yeah you're probably mm. right because of her telling her story in her head about her dad being dependent on alcohol but not I mean, seeing this is non canon everyone mm. but it's just this is what the actress had done to prepare for the role but really i thought that was a really interesting way of trying to work out why linda mm. would suddenly be like this or it have feels, this in her it genuinely feels like there is no going back with this story and that there no. is no there is no redemption there is no redemption that can happen with no, this it all feels so final and they're like mm. they're almost setting everything up for when linda's not here yeah like mick and whitney yeah and like shirley feeling guilty maybe for not helping but also shirley's got that other story now like she's when she was first given the responsibility by phil to look after the family and the, you know the jobs mm. around it didn't really interfere with any kind of story with her in fact it made shirley become again a background character she went off on holidays and did money laundering here and whatever but now she, this that story seems to be getting reintroduced again and she's having to look after dennis yeah. so again as you say so they're kind of painting shirley's story into a different direction direction mm. too whereas to linda it. like it's just spiraling down we're like there's no mm. sort of light at the end of this tunnel and i think also you can argue that maybe if the the leo and whitney story does continue and that Whit- leo becomes more and more and more obsessive that she and mick are going to need support and where could they get support they could get support from each other and yeah. so it's heading that kind of way isn't it i mean the only thing i do wonder is if linda it does die like i don't know are they going to be able to get nancy lee and johnny back for the funeral like mm. all three actors or two or some of the actors i mean i guess lee would come back but it would be really hard pushed writing wise that the other two wouldn't be there for her yeah know, but, or, or would they do it off screen but that would feel really cheap and but also tacky. now you've mentioned about the three kids as well it, it would it just feels a bit yucky that they kind of would lose their mum it just mm. it, i mean the casters have always been this unit through, through thick and thin they've always helped each other out um and they've been through problems together but they've always helped each other out and it's just i don't know it just feels really it's like when when lee came back for christmas and there was that scene when they're all sat on the bed and they're watching a film on the laptop and you just saw lee and linda and mick and Mm. ollie all together and tina and it did it did it felt we said ourselves we said oh my god this feels this is the carters we remember this is the carters we want back and now they've gone so far into destroying the carters it just and it's just doesn't nasty feel like... Mm. like when she was with mick and she was like handing him the divorce papers mm. you know channeling dirty den but, but it's funny don't you think actually you say it's channeling dirty den but do you not think that it was almost channeling what angie wished she had done oh yeah so yeah. because angie was obviously the alcoholic too mm. but so, it's the other way around yeah. so this time so this time around it was Angie if you think about it it was Angie that was handing the the divorce papers to Den but she was mm. never strong enough to do that to Den Den was always had that hold on her and um it's it's weird because it almost Linda has this time around the hold on Mick mm. Mick just can't Mick probably feels like he wants to duck out and leave and just let her get on with her life but he can't he feels responsible for her and the same way that Angie felt responsible for Den but Den had the guts to kind of give the divorce papers this time around it's Angie that's the stronger one and strong enough to give the divorce papers to Mick mm. this time though on really misunderstood proposal like the fact that she thinks that he's trying to steal ollie from her and destroy her and take and alienate her a, and... well basically he she thought that he was trying to sell the vic from under her nose so that she would be left penniless mm. because i think she was comparing also her story with sharon and what's happened to sharon recently <laughs> and so it's all mixing up in her mind and because she's drinking it's all kind of getting mashed up and washed into like the wrong colors and i think mm. she's just messing herself up I mean, it's very final, you know, those divorce papers. Mm. We do know that they, in 1986, they got 30 million viewers. Yes. Don't think it will be hit quite 30 million for this episode. Well, I mean, they were up against the 10,000th <laughs> episode of Coronation Street as well. That's true. Where we found out Ken Barlow was leaving. Mm. I mean, at the end. Wow, what a highlight. <laughs> 
So um, I don't even watch Coronation Street. You made Spoiler. me watch the end of that before well, we I wanted record... to know how he left because he was on a bus before when I saw a the party first bus. Half. A party bus. And all of a sudden, he's just walking a dog and leaving. There was Rita walking around the pub, like listening to like, <laughs> ghost voices. Spoilers. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. If anyone li- watches Coronation Street and you haven't seen the F- well, on EastEnders, there was a man watching someone from a roof. Who? Oh, yes, Leo. <laughs> See, we have the good stuff now. Now Kate Oates has come our way. You know, <laughs> we, yeah. we get the good nuggets. But, um, yeah, it feels very final. That obviously, I mean, will they get divorced? Who knows? But you know, she got them written up very quickly. Mm. And Gray didn't write them up for her. She, he's not a family lawyer. <laughs> How many times she got the tube? Didn't she? Oh, yeah, she went somewhere. I found that really strange because I thought, well, why are you letting us know that she's going off on the tube? And mm. it wasn't until the end, obviously, you realise she went to see a solicitor. But would a solicitor yeah, have written... A, a rat, a drunk. <laughs> yeah, like a drunk, <laughs> random, mascara-ran woman. Like, she, she's rambling at them. Saying, What's the husband's name? Trip? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mick, is it? Mick Carter? Oh, right. he's, he's, he's taken everything away from me. <laughs> okay. I, I have to say the cinematography was really good. This I, I, I just seem to have a thing about cinematography. But um, did you not notice when Linda was drinking that the camera shots become much more wobbly mm. and they're much more jagged and off angle so you're almost seeing it from the point of view of how Linda sees things. Yeah and the first time she walked out of the Vic after having a drink like the day hit her and mm. she was a bit like dazed Bewildered. And she, she thought everyone was watching her as she just stood there it was really good and she's mm. playing it amazingly mm. but it just all feels very yucky. Yeah. The whole thing Yuck. It needs a good wash It does. It needs to, <laughs> yeah it needs to get some water on it <laughs> In the Thames, nice clean Thames water <laughs> will um, help her out. Hmm. Well, Denise is back from her Scottish trip. And what did you spot, Ben? New weave. New weave. New hair. Mm. Even Jack noticed. Oh. Even Jack. Detective Jack. That's true. Of course he's going to notice oh, yeah. a new weave. Metrosexual. Week. I don't think it's got anything to do with that. He's just got he's a very keen man. eye. Keen eye. <laughs> but um, yeah, she's back and she gets to meet Isaac who um, we know is Patrick's son. Yes. From 33 years ago. We found nine out. Nine months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't, we still don't know loads about Isaac. I mean, he's going for a job as a teacher. Mm. He likes to party. He does. Is he a bit of like a mess head? I'm not really sure. A mess? Mess head. Like oh. a bit of a party animal. Like, I don't know. Like he was going to his interview with like dirty clothes on or something. And Patrick was like, nope. Now that he knows that he's his son, he's like, no, you can't wear that. I'll get you some a new tie to wear and stuff. So... Oh, a tie will change it, won't it? Mm. So if you're wearing a really dirty, then you have something on his shirt. tie or on his shirt or or something. I can't. Really I don't know. I remember. I have to say, I didn't pay much attention. <laughs> Well, Isaac is his son. Yeah, I got that. I got oh, okay. that much. And I know that uh, Patrick wants to tell Isaac that mm-hmm. he is the father. Yes, but there's history of the dad. Like, the one who Isaac thought was his dad. Well, it's not history, is it? It's that, that Cherie doesn't want Isaac's memory of his dad. Mm-hmm. A bit like Leo and his he dad. Left him. Yeah, he doesn't want it tarnished um, the same way as Leo's memory of his dad was tarnished. Mm, by, by Whitney, by, that liar. Yeah, so yeah, I bet Whitney will be the one who tells him that Patrick <laughs> says, Dad, what a bitch. As much as Patrick wants to, he's giving him fatherly knowledge and instincts without him knowing that he is mm. actually the father after all. We're going to get, you know, six months down the line, Isaac's going to be out on a night out and Patrick's like, no, just come, stop getting drunk, Isaac. He chases him to the oh, big garden. Oh, no, do you think? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I need this moment. Okay. And he goes, oh, Patrick, just leave me alone. You're not my father. <laughs> He'll say, yeah, man. Flicks his fingers and I says, I am your father. Yeah, man, I am your father. <laughs> and then gets a bottle of rum out. <laughs> your stereotypes are just flashing by you, aren't that's they? That's what Patrick does. No, that's true. He gets money out of his hat and says, here's a He tenor. does. Yeah. He just doesn't want the, this thing. I don't understand why Cherie like, doesn't want to tell. Why didn't she tell him because when she doesn't, he was young? She, well, like before he no, there was no got need to. Bond. Because there was the father, um, Eamon. Eamon no. was her father. Was she with this guy when she had this fling with Patrick then? Well, I would imagine Eamon knew... Well, maybe Eamon didn't know that Isaac was his son. Mm. Maybe he or was his son. I don't know. My confusion. No. But, he would have told him on his deathbed, I imagine. Mm, but he doesn't want Isaac to know because he doesn't want... As I say, he doesn't want that memory forgotten. Because I, Eamon was obviously a very good dad to him. And mm. perhaps when Eamon... So we think. Well, perhaps when Eamon died was the moment when Isaac went off the rails a little bit. And so Cherie thinks that if she, he also finds out that Eamon wasn't her... Oh, yeah, he'll wasn't go his even dad, more off the rails. He'll go even further. Because he is a bit of a party animal. Mm. Like, he, when he got, he got the job of the, of the teacher uh, after his interview... Like, because that's what interviews happen nowadays. They literally tell you, oh, yeah, you got yeah, a job. Yeah, and you start on. tomorrow as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah start the next... That's how teachers work nowadays. That's, <laughs> Come with your so, lesson uh, plan. They're so understaffed. <laughs> Our education system is so badly uh, constructed. That do you think um, Rachel Gazinski interviewed him? 
she works at Wolford High. Like the Polytech. Yeah, yeah perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> I would have thought... Um, That's a 1992 reference for everyone, yeah. just so you know. <laughs> I would have thought Gethin would have done the interview, maybe. No, I mean, Mr. Price, he moved away. That's a 2017 reference, by the way. <laughs> he's in Hollyoaks now. Or he no, was he's in. not. He's oh, gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he played him. a really bizarre doctor that talked really posh. <laughs> A gay doctor. Uh, yes. Who talked really posh. I mean, if, you, if you're not gay, then what are you doing on Hollyoaks? <laughs> you know, you have to be gay. It's a pre- prerequisite mm. of being on Hollyoaks. But yeah, he got his job at Wolford High. And mm. um, that's it, really. And he, well, no, Patrick he... wanted to celebrate with him, but mm. he phoned his mates and was like, oh, no, I'll come out with you later. And then... But then Patrick convinced him to have a drink. Mm. But then Isaac did an impression of Patrick, perhaps less the style of what you just did, <laughs> and uh, put on uh, uh, Patrick's hat and... Uh, looked like him. And he looked... Yes, and you could tell Denise was a bit like, hang on, hang on a minute. <laughs> you look like Patty. Mm. <laughs> if, if only Jack was here, he could whisper in my ear a little clue. <laughs> Do you think Jack... I've just popped into my mind. Do you think Jack is a real killjoy if you play a game of Cluedo with him? Do you reckon he like oh, literally... he works it out? Yeah, I doubt he it. Literally just he's not a good the... detective. He's just a detective. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but he just, he just sits there and goes, Professor Plum, kitchen, lead piping. And they're like, oh, for goodness sake, Jack, I'm not playing anymore. <laughs> but um, that's all there is to say about Isaac, really. He's just party animal. I'm assuming we may see him in Wolford High one mm. day. Yeah. Well, the, the, but Wolford there's no young. High. Yeah, but there's no young kids in the square mm. anymore. Dennis? He's young. Yeah, but he's the only one. So there's no reason to bring Lily. back that. <laughs> Lily's too young, isn't she? <laughs> there's no one in the right age group, nope, is there? Nope. Well, they had little... Dennis is only like 14. Well, they had 13. a little clan, didn't they, a couple of years ago? No, with... dead. <laughs> That's true. With Shaquille. Shaquille. Dead. Keegan's not dead. No, but he's he... a businessman now. Well, he's being profiled. Yeah. Bex is just sitting in a house. Bex has run away pregnant. <laughs> Bex hasn't. Louise. Oh, no, no, Louise has, yeah. yeah. Bex, oh, yeah, Bex has got no storyline again. Dottie, she's at college now. She's too old. She's too old. Mm. Yeah, it's not really... Hunter, dead. Oh, yeah, Hunter's dead. He Bernie, was a late arrival. Bernie and Tiff don't seem to do anything. Tiff goes to college for um, a beauty. Yeah, off screen. Of course. Well, of course, That's they're no not going to... for us, How is it? boring if there's a half an hour episode of watching well, her put eye makeup on? bullied in college or something? I don't know. Give no, her a storyline. No, bullying stories. Okay, we'll let her be really good in college and... Show us. <laughs> or no, show us her to. and Bernie. What does that. Bernie do? She's still at school. No, she's at college. What does she do? College. Yeah, what? College. She's colleging at college. I don't mm. know. She's probably studying English and what, know, Bernie, maths. Chess, maths, probably. Yeah, maths, English and... Maths and tactical skills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, information technology. Clate. She could be doing Clate. What's that? Do you remember Clate? Computer literacy and information technology. <clears throat> I did what Clate. What year was that? Clate. I did, I did Clate. Yes, Thanks. well, we Isn't all know it? how old you are. Anyway, let's move on to the next story. But I think we have. Because that's enough now, because mm. I don't know what Bernie does at college. Um, we had a little short Jean and Daniel storyline. I think called Jean Shaw. <laughs> Did you know really that Jean, <laughs> um, Jean and Pat had a storyline where they were um, London thingy singers, pearly singers? When? Like, well, when Jean was introduced? Yeah, like, Gene and Pat did it as a storyline. So the early 2000s, perhaps. Yeah, I can't remember someone. But, like, you know, that's exactly what Daniel wanted. Oh, so Jean could have done so it before. Jean could have done it if she bothered. Mm, she was a bit blindsided, though, because she didn't know why Daniel was taking her back to the funeral parlour, other than to have a bit of fun with yeah. Rainey and Stuart So again. boring, this storyline. I don't oh, know no, how this... Oh, it no, is, This cancer storyline is so... I don't know Shush. how they've made it so boring. I disagree. I thought and there was so really... Empty. <laughs> It was not empty. It I mean, is. they're obviously filling up a little bit by adding the Rainey and Stewart story, and obviously, and and Rainey and Stewart have now discovered that Daniel is kind of playing them, and you know he's from. Mm. I feel like I've been cheated Ke- out of like an upset though. Yeah. Like all these things should be happening to Jean that I should be crying about mm. because it's Daniel. It's just like I don't care. I do, oh no, Trish, I do <laughs> care. When he was at the doctor's surgery and the doctor said, you know, I think you need to realise now that this is the end of term. You know, you're, mm. you're a couple weeks. of weeks away. 19th of February. Yeah. Maybe he's the one who drowned. <laughs> um, maybe he takes Linda with him. I, I, I thought it was a really touching moment, especially when... No, it was very sweet. Especially when Jean said, like, I'm not going anywhere. Like he and you're right, rub it in. Yeah, exactly. And he, yeah, he basically as good as said that, didn't he? And this, uh, but it was like I, I don't know. For me, it, it felt real and really sweet. And like, yeah, but I I'm not getting it. watery eyes from any of it. Well, when I, I did. when it was announced, I thought it was going to be. Mm. But I'm not. No, I think Stacy just... being missing, which isn't their fault. I think that's not helped. Well, because yeah, Stacy should be there. I like the fact that that Jean has her independence and that she's not relying on her family like Kat and Stacy. But but her family are still there if she needs them. So now the rest of the Slaters can have like their little stories if they need to out the way. And Jean's still got her story with Daniel. 
And I do, I do, I really think that the, the, when it comes to Daniel's death, it's going to be a really devastating moment and it's going to be played excellently by the actress. Yeah. So that's what I think I'm looking forward to. I think that... If I don't cry, I'm going to be really annoyed. Well, I think, I think you will flood tears. You'll need a I washing don't. up bowl underneath your face from so much water. Did you know that we have a website where you can find all the EastEnders content you could ever need? WolfordWeekly.com has all of our podcasts, spoiler casts, YouTube videos and articles in one place. You can also find our social media and merch store links too. And if you visit WolfordWeekly.com and click to our merch store between the 12th and the 14th of February, you can take advantage of the Ballon Valentine special. All items in store will have 20% off. So have a look now by visiting WolfordWeekly.com and come join the family. So we had Adam Woodjack. Yeah give his one good performance of the year he always does it around anniversary yeah. time as well doesn't he checks it in yeah he does it's like he blooms in february <laughs> and uh, uh, and march he it, 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 it's um wood yet and bloom mm. don't talk to me about wolford and bloom <laughs> um but yeah he was very horrible to poor bobby he um, was nasty yeah typical ian bill get how horrible and nasty and selfish mm. he is really but was he right to stay and do what he did no <laughs> that's the question i don't know i rewatched his yelling scene at bobby because yeah. it was during the whole conversion thing mm. when that bobby's meant to be celebrating it's meant to be about bobby mm. he's obviously invited the press around here's a photo of nelson mandela <laughs> yeah really random. <laughs> to make him there. look holy and nice and mm. peaceful and pure and he's using it this whole thing of Bobby is like a, a way to look good, basically. Mm. But Bobby's kind of allowing him to do it because it's a way of him and his dad having some time together. I mm. think he's, he's he knows what his dad's doing. He's not particularly happy about it, but it's allowing him and his dad to spend some time together. Yeah, so he's letting it happen. Mm. And um, Ian confesses to Sharon that he still doesn't feel very safe around Bobby. And this is really what kind of triggers Bobby a little bit because he feels like, you know, he's doing everything in his power to kind of to get his father's forgiveness. He's forgiven other people this week. He's forgiven Dennis for knocking him down and putting him on the table. Mm. Dennis kind of returned the favour by saying, my dad's going to have you when <laughs> Phil is one, not your yeah, dad. Sprays him like coke over him. Two, yeah, act like a child, mm. which he's trying to act like all hard and cool and young, but then acts it up by spraying a can of coke on it. <laughs> Dennis is, I mean, everything is lined up to basically make Bobby fail this week. So Dennis then goes onto his laptop, which Bobby naively left open in front of Dennis. I know. That was like a Whitney in the hospital last week yeah. situation. Yeah, a really stupid thing didn't to do. Didn't even close it. Not even password protected. Nothing. Didn't go straight to screensaver after five seconds. No, Silly. Fool. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, and so I presumably searched terrorism or something. Yeah, I don't know. Searched Google something like searched. Um, extremism or how to get into extreme or something yeah, weird. Yeah, something ridiculous. Something and so, then so phoned so the obvious. police and told them. Yeah, something <laughs> so ridiculously obvious. But then the police found the laptop and they looked into it and realised there was nothing particularly very suspicious. Mm. It's just yet again Dennis being And Bobby crap. gave it away like willingly, which yeah. played good for his character. Mm. There's a massive part of Bobby. I think why everyone feels for him is massively down to the actor mm. like there's something about him where when he went to the conversion and everyone was there he, the actor's so good at portraying like emotions really mm. subtly mm. and you just felt really like happy for him that people were there and accepting him yeah and even max is being like nice to him and being like fatherly to him it's really funny because this was the which first week where i actually liked max which mm. was terrifying the was worse yeah but not just that he was kind to bobby and mm. like, understanding the listened. whole yeah, the whole lesson was for Bobby that forgiveness, if you forgive people or ask for forgiveness, then forgiveness will come to you. And he's gained that from Max because there's a mutual understanding between them and they and they are OK. You know, they're fine. And I think this is all Bobby wants is a community. He wants to feel like he's part of something and, mm. you know, this, and not be lied to and not be lied to. And, and, and also not feel like he has to. It's a two way street that if he like is open with someone that they will be open back to him. And it's like for some reason, Ian won't open up to Bobby, always blaming him for the death of Lucy mm. and he just can't forgive him for I mean, it. It's a very complicated thing. Like mm. even trying to work it out is like if this was real, it's like the most complicated thing in the world because you have Ian who openly admitted that Lucy was his favourite mm. and obviously his favourite is the one that died. But you then have Bobby who didn't know that he killed his sister and his mum and his dad who the two people he should have trusted are the ones who kept this from him. Yeah. And then also you have the fact thing with Max, where Max got blamed for murdering um, Lucy. So he initially blamed Bobby, but Bobby didn't 
know about that either. Yeah. So there's so many weird, complicated things going on between this family. And like even Kathy's not particularly like she needs to be more matriarchal. Like she says, Oh Ian, don't do that but then that's as far as Kathy goes. Yeah. <laughs> like she needs to step up a bit more. But she's not she's not to a f- her fault perhaps. She's not actually a Bill, is she? She's Yeah, but she's Ian's mum. Yeah, but she's Bobby's still Yeah, but she's not a Lou, is she? And that's what you're wanting. You're wanting her to become a Lou Bill. I know but but she she's won't so be a close. Lou Bill. But she's not though, because she's not because she's not her moral compass isn't quite on the same standard as Lou. I mean Lou would do something primarily every every time for her family while Kathy sees it from different directions and sides. Mm. Like for instance Sharon, like if she if she was if she truly loved her son then she would have understood that she needed to to do that to forgive Sharon to for her son, but mm. she didn't. She went took the side of Phil instead. She's not selfless enough. That's right. She's not, not that she's step... selfish, but she's not selfless enough. Or she didn't give. Or what she should have done is given Sharon a ticket to New Zealand and made her fly away and <laughs> leave leave the family alone. That's an option. Yeah, there's always an option. Yeah. So I think that's what you're looking for. As you said, matriarch. You're looking for a Lou Bill, and Kathy isn't a Bill. Mm. They need that though, because Ian needs someone to talk back to him and someone mm. bigger than him. Put him in line. Like Bobby. Bobby won't lash out anymore. He's very peaceful and like yeah. like ian was prodding him and he was being really that's the thing wasn't it bobby him. wasn't fighting back was he he mm. just he took it and accepted it mm. but but he's not a, he's not forgiving ian and that's a that's strange because you th- you think that after all these lessons he learned that he should forgive ian because he's forgiven you know he's forgiven a lot of people on that square but for that the one that i think is because ian doesn't believe in him and he's ultimately shown him that i don't think he can he can forgive ian right now but kathy's kathy's trying to get them in the same room and talk to one another and mm. i just don't think it's going to work out no it's I, not i mean, I mean Ian has written him off completely. He's mm. getting rid of all his photos. Yeah, yeah. Sort of photos of Victorian women from years ago, but anyone's a Bobby. <laughs> In their pantaloons, you know, all kinds They're of stuff. All gone, but um, <laughs> no, he's happy to be alone. Mm. Well, this is it, isn't it? Because this had this had also echoes of when Cindy hurt him with the first time round. I mean, again, we've watched these recently on the classics. 89. On, yeah, in the drama channel. And when Cindy hurt him, he just basically decided, I don't need anyone. I can do everything for myself. And that's when yeah, he started. No one can hurt me if I've got no one around me. That's right. And I, all I think about is my drive to make money. Obviously, this time, I don't think it's business orientated. But is Ian's drive now going to be ultimately to get the power from the council? And yeah, maybe campaigning. Mm. And... And do you think he'll campaign against some kind of Muslim a mosque being built or something like that, which would further tear the relationship between him and Bobby? Yeah, because he seems to have a real problem with Bobby's religion, doesn't he? He just can make little really snide mm. comments about it. And um, I mean, yes, that's Ian Bill. But at the same time, it, that's also his son. And he I don't think he really understands how much his little comments keep chipping away at Bobby mm. when Bobby's not really doing anything. Okay. Yes. He killed his, his daughter, his favorite, but like Bobby's not really done anything since then to kind of warrant him. No. I mean, the, when Bobby punished. said, Oh, Max has been a better father figure than you have. Mm. That seemed to be making him think, how dare you say that? Yeah. That hurt. So him. Yeah. fine. I'll you, you're gone to me. Mm. But yeah, I mean, we've got Peter Bill coming back soon. Yay. So we've got that. And, and hopefully, we can all sit down because Peter's not seen Bobby since the reveal. But they left on good terms. They did. But he still said, I have to leave because I can't be with, I can't be near you. That's but why he it, left. No, it's because he couldn't keep the secret. Yeah. He couldn't, he couldn't keep it inside of him with a good conscience. So and, he had to leave. And also Ian still hasn't really dealt with Stephen's death. So there's, there's a load mm. of things that haven't been dealt with. So hopefully with Peter coming back and the bills being a bit more full, we can get some of these issues talked about mm. calmly. Maybe <laughs> this is what it is. Maybe you, you were just saying about Stephen's death as well. Maybe Ian just hasn't grieved properly mm. maybe he hasn't had a moment to grieve like properly he's not sat down and talked and been open about it. i mean obviously when lucy died he had that scene with phil the quite famous scene with phil when he said i've you know i've got nothing mm. left and and you know he did open up eventually with jane and they, you know they kept the secret together but i mean has he has he properly grieved do you think do you think he just needs a time out maybe and, and, and adam would yet need to take a break and make that his time to relax and mm. i don't know it's just weird because i think that ian's always been dist- he likes to distract himself and perhaps because he's always distracting himself and this mm. time around he's 
said, I don't need anyone. So now he's distracting himself into his work of being a counsellor. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's never been able to grieve. Like when mm. Pete died, he didn't grieve because no. he had the twin straight away. Yeah. His mum died, but then obviously she came back. So that's all a bit messed up. And then obviously Jane has left him, but he didn't really grieve the end of that marriage. And then he went straight on to trying to get Mel yeah. and didn't really... He doesn't really process anything, does he? That's right. He's not had a moment to process mm. and grieve. And perhaps this is something that he needs to do. Or else I, I fear that this may lead to another Ian Bill homeless tramp breakdown Break situation yeah. again. And he's also like after the affections of Sharon now. And that's just yeah. not happening. But then that's... Well, Sharon is friend zone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and with that also, you know, that's going to end up in disappointment, obviously. So that's going to be another thing that's just going to oh, yeah. knock Ian down another level again he distracts himself doesn't he that's it he's distracting himself mm. all the time so now his new distraction is sharon and looking at these old photos he's like a whimsical old woman isn't he he mm. needs to like find something to do like it'll take up knitting soon or crochet just <laughs> he needs to... to give calvin a call his old mate calvin what what down, down in uh, hollywood yeah get a job at nickelodeon he was shown on the photos <laughs> So we had a nice little dark, mysterious return at the door. Beardy, Leather jackets. Hairy. I know, he's growing his hair out quick. Black, wearing all black. Yeah. So he's Cat. in the shadows. <laughs> yeah. No one spotted him. <laughs> Apparently he appeared behind Bernie when she was on the phone. Someone put on Twitter. Ooh. I've just seen it. Have like, you watched the she, scene? When she, no, I've, oh. I've just seen it on Twitter. But apparently when she was on the phone, like saying, Keanu, where are you? Like he was behind her. Like I, as she walked past. I have past. to rewatch that scene. Yeah. What what day is it? Is it even th- well, it's been Thursday? It would have been Thursday because it wasn't mm. today. Because Bernie spent all day today. So we record this on a Friday. <laughs> so she spent all Friday wandering around asking anyone who'd listen whether <laughs> they know anything about Keanu. So she asked Sharon. She was like, No, I don't know anything, and ran away. She asked Callum. Callum was like, He's certainly not dead, and then walked away. You know, because <laughs> um, yeah, Callum's trained to be a policeman still. Yes, and he while w- keeping the secret of a murder. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and he will pass with flying colours because Mick and Jack has told him because Jack knew. <laughs> Jack already knows the results because he uh, yeah. they they write them out before. I mean, it's they not do a great it. start to his policing career for Callum that he's keeping this murder of Keanu under wraps for yeah. his boyfriend. He'll go far in Wolford. Mm. Flying colours. I'm looking forward to seeing him in his police uniform. Mm. I'm not going to lie. And he's running in a police mm. uniform. But I, I, it's I, like the ultimate. Mix. I fear that he's going to promote like really quickly. It's going to be something really ridiculous. <laughs> like he's been in uniform for like one month and like yes, I'm now a detective sergeant. <laughs> I just I just fear that that's what they're going to do. Because everything just goes so fast. It's like mm. cat's dry, uh, taxi license. It's like that just disappeared. Which, which, I suppose that it was did. going really quick, wasn't it? Well, she said she was planning to. Most people do it in three years, but I'm going to do it in six months. <laughs> but then, yeah, you're right. It just kind of disappeared. I wonder mm. if she still has that map of London on the wall. No, it's gone now. It was up there for quite a long time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Bernie's trying to find out where Keanu is, and she asks Karen because Karen's not really bothered about the police asking about him being missing. No, and that's what makes Bernie sort of question it. So she takes Karen's phone. She finds Keanu's secret number, and mm. she silly she says, "You know, it's safe to come back now. Phil's gone." Yeah, stupid Bernie, <laughs> which is kind of true, but at the same time, it's gonna jeopardise a lot of people. Well, I suppose Bernie Martin's not going to be happy. No, Bernie doesn't know enough of the background information. But Karen did tell her that Kea... Yeah, Ke- too late. Keanu is still alive, yes. Mm, but he's safe and he can't come back and that's when he's obviously got that text from Bernie and was like, mm. oh, okay. Yep. He would have thought he would have texted Martin saying, I've just got this text from Bernie, is this true? No, I think he's... <laughs> can made, I come back He's got to Radio Solent with Martin, hasn't he? has got he? Martin's phone, hasn't he? He said you can keep in contact with me on this. Well, then how does he contact Martin? <laughs> he can't message himself, can Martin he? had two phones, remember? Oh, I'm messing around. But, um... well, yeah, but Martin's had three phones, actually, if you remember. Because one oh, of them was in the shed. He also burnt one as well, didn't he? No, he didn't. No, but that means he had four phones. <laughs> No, he had a... He had that a... sounds about right. <laughs> For a debt collector like him. <laughs> yeah, he had that phone that he hid in the shed really badly and Sharon still has. Oh, yeah, of course. Lots Sharon of phones. still has that phone. I didn't realise <laughs> that. She probably give it to Keanu. Do you reckon it's in her baby bag and from she goes to the hospital? Yeah, because she was in the middle of doing that. Finally, mm. she had two minutes of peace after the past nine months that she's had. Well, she said she's been spending all her time thinking about Dennis and how she's going to get him back. Mm. Now, just imagine like these, you know, like in Home Alone or in like those films when they've like made a big plot of like a bank heist and you have that rolled up piece of paper and it's rolled up on both ends and they kind of unravel it mm. and then they put a brick and like something sh- uh, <laughs> uh, heavy on the other end and you just see this like, blueprint. Big plan. Yeah, this blueprint. So, uh, that's how I imagine Sharon's plan to get Dennis back is. You just see this shot of her like unravel unraveling this blueprint is like, not her no. pregnancy bag <laughs> it's in her pregnancy bag so <laughs> I mean, she... what has she got in there glittery top lipstick mm, trainers oh yeah trainers mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there was something hair about... extent clipping hair extension <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
And um, eyelash extension. Full MAC cosmetic kit. <laughs> GHD hair straightener. Yeah, yeah. Bottle of vodka for when she's had it. <laughs> Straight on it. Drinking. Done. Yeah, but that got interrupted again. She still didn't get to finish it because mm. Keanu was at the door. Somebody's knocking at her door. To whisk her away. Mm. Come with me forever. Come I'm with here for me baby Keanu. And you'll see. Mm. In a world of hairy You'll get copyright faces. if you sing that. Nah, not on, not on Podbean. Yeah, you will. Okay. They're listening. <laughs> <laughs> They're always listening. Well, yeah, he wants to take her away, apparently. Just like that. Well, yeah, the, he's he's given up with Louise, hasn't he? Like, oh, this, this whole thing was like, I'm going to get Louise back. Oh, yeah, he said the he whole, loves her and Yeah, the stuff. whole Christmas flashback was like, I can't leave without Louise. I'm oh, sure if I speak to Louise, she'll understand. We'll have the baby and we'll go together. Now he's just like, well, I've done with Louise. <laughs> I'm going for Sharon. Mm, that's weird. Sloppy seconds, Sharon. Mm. Your sloppy seconds. We didn't see her reply, so mm. she fluttered her eyes. She's like, no. She was a bit like, oh, get a haircut, get a shave. <laughs> I don't know. I quite like rough. Yeah, piano. he looks better with longer hair. Mm. Although it, I felt like he didn't grow that beard all himself. I feel like because of the not because he couldn't grow the beard. I want to make this clear, but that because of the constraints of time of filming, I feel that they may have. No, that's real, isn't it? Hunter grew a beard. Oh. So can Keanu. Hunter, DJ Hunter. <laughs> He's in heaven now, spinning records mm. and straightening ties. But it was nice this week, I must say, to finally have Bernie back. She hasn't been on screen in ages. I don't think she left. It's just yeah, but not... she's not been doing anything, has she? But it's just nice that she got something to do. She just stands outside the Albert thinking, I can't wait when I'm 18. <laughs> I can go in the Albert. Because um, she's she's a good character. She's a good actress. She's... I I I miss her when she's not there. Mm, her intelligent fun. points have gone down a little bit. Like her emotion has overthrown her just intelligence and... Hmm. Well, she did think say... her brother was dead, so that's got true. Let her. And Ted's not there to give her guidance. No, <laughs> to keep her level. No, he, he's bungee jumping somewhere, isn't he? I mean, I was going to say that Bernie's never used her emotion to influence her thoughts, but actually, that's not true, is it? She's very mm. emotional, isn't she? Isn't Bernie really? Oh, Burn. It's nice that she got something to do. I mean, all Habiba did was appear in the background of Bobby's um party. Not surprise. She didn't even have a line. Well, she did. They she clapped and cheered. That's not a line. <laughs> Tracy and Marie have had more to than her, so... Tracy Cause... was really reacting this week. Mm. I mean, her Bieber watch is still they're... not going well. No. I did, I, she's got things to do, though, hasn't she? She's doing stuff soon. Next week. Yeah. Well, I don't know if she's actually... Do... She's involved in something, but I don't know if she does anything. Well... She probably stands in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Pops her head over. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Hello, I shouldn't be here, but hello. <laughs> I'm still here, you know. I'm still getting paid to be mm. here. My but contract Keanu... ends in November. <laughs> but Keanu's back, so there's, you know, there's chance now for a Julius theme again. We no. thought maybe the airport was going to get one, but it didn't. Now we know why, because he's back again. Do you think the funeral of whoever dies, if someone dies, we keep presuming someone's, someone's dying on the anniversary. Okay, so if someone dies die. on the anniversary show, do you think they will finally have a Julius theme? Yes. They have to. Yeah? You yeah. bet on it? What? I don't know. I don't have money. <laughs> no, it's like a forfeit. <laughs> Not sure. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah? No one will know if I do it anyway. So. Yeah, they will, because we'll put it on Twitter. <laughs> So if 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 they do a Julius theme for the funeral of someone, no, no, not who... the funeral, the actual death. Oh, the actual the, death on the boat. On the Friday, yeah. Okay. The twentieth, is it? No, twenty-first. Yeah. Know. The Friday of the. Because the nineteenth is the anniversary, but that's it's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday, and there's no episode on a Wednesday. <laughs> we said no. this. So it's the Friday. So the Friday. Okay. Well, then I want everyone listening out there to send in your suggestions for what Ben's forfeit could be. What about your forfeit? Well, if, if you could get if, it wrong, if you're so you right, think there won't be one. Yeah, I don't think there won't be. I think there won't be one. Mm. So if if you're right and I'm wrong and there is is one, then I'll do the forfeit. So if okay, anyone good. can think of any forfeit, it has to be doable and cheap. <laughs> um, please send us your suggestions on Twitter at Wolford Weekly or our Facebook group. <laughs> You can find us by looking at Wolford Weekly on Facebook mm-hmm. um, and send us your sh- suggestions for what the forfeit should be if Ben or I are wrong about Julia's theme for the death on the boat. Lovely. So that's the week wrapped up now with mm. our forfeit. So we're going to go on to our gossip section where we read out all the tweets and replies and everyone's thoughts on the week. You know me, I ain't want to gossip. So it's that time at the end of the show where we read out your comments that you've sent to us on our Twitter, Facebook and our Instagram accounts. And we find out who you think have won the week. We've also had a question sent in to us that we uh, would like to answer. So are you looking forward to that, Ben? Have we? Mm, We have. Mm. And we asked you guys a question on our Twitter and Facebook that you answered for us. And we'll read out some of the comments from them as well. But before we do any of that, we go into Ben's makeshift time machine made out of of cardboard boxes that he found in his local Tesco (laughs) Metro. Glued them together, got some egg boxes to look like headlights at the front. And he's made himself a little DeLorean. And he's travelling back to the future. And he's going to tell us 
who won previous weeks by looking back at EastEnders past. Got there in the end. I got myself in a bit of a hole there, didn't mm. I? Not for the Just first like time. Oh, we both made a pun. <laughs> Aren't we clever? I'm going to do birthdays first. There's only a handful of birthdays. One which was missed on the show, which could have been on the show this week. So it's a current cast member? Ah, uh, yes, it is. May I guess? Yeah, when I get to it. Oh, okay. So, first one, 7th of February, 1951. This is a boring one. Rosa DeMarco was born. Yeah. The mother of the house, yeah. yeah. They lasted. They're, they're like the Panisers now. They won't mm. last long. Or the Traverniers. <laughs> yeah. 2nd of Feb, 1968. Ian could have got a photo of this on the table. Mark Fowler's birthday. 68? Oh, yeah, yeah I suppose, yeah. God, you don't think of... Oh, God. There's a big gap between him and... um Martin. Martin, yeah. Right, 5th of Feb, 1968. Same year as Mark. Tom Banks was born. Oh, Tom, wasn't that Sharon's... Lover firefighter lover yes, yes. the one who died Perished. in the fire because um mo trevor 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 had started the fire that's right yes right, so this one was 6th of february 2003 a bobby no uh 2003 so what was that maybe 18 dotty no bex no uh, bernie no keegan no <laughs> a tip. the last one yes yeah tip. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, how weird they missed Tiff's birthday. She'd... Sonia missed it. Whitney missed it. Keegan missed it. Bernie missed it. Bianca didn't even bother phoning. No. Tom, um, missed, not Tom. That's the actor. Leo missed it. Oh, yeah, yeah. He should be obsessed with them. He should know. Yeah, he should have slipped a note to Whitney for a <laughs> fool on her when she woke up. Don't forget to phone Tiff. <laughs> oh, it's Tiffany's birthday. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, that's funny. Mm. Um, one death. Now, I'll be very impressed if you know who this is. 9th of February, 1989. Trevor Kello died. Hang on. Trevor Kello. <laughs> 1989? Yes. Trevor. Not Trevor as in the... It, not the idiot. The, the no, fool. not him. He didn't die, sadly. Trevor Short? No. Trevor Short. Oh, then I don't know. Um, He was the guy who was in prison with Den. <laughs> the one who oh, killed the... himself. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes. He's the death. He was wrongly accused of something. Yes. And like being a paedophile. Or that's right. Hurting an I... old woman or something else. No, he, he stole they're from an old woman. They're two very different crimes. Yeah, they are. Just... <laughs> yeah. There was the, he, he stole from an old woman. That and he, 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 he was actually innocent. He pleaded but... innocence the whole yeah. time. No one believed him. He killed himself. And then the day of his death, he got acquitted in that's court. Right. That old story. Yeah, that old chestnut. <laughs> so, yeah, he's the only one to die in. The week of this February. Uh, I thought you were going to say it was the guy who slept in the Dagmar when Ian wanted to get, take the building to turn it into the mill machine. The old guy. Oh, him. The, the market guy. Yeah, the brick and brass. Oh, no. I no. thought it might have been him. He's alive and kicking still, I'm sure. Yeah, good. Right, the episode that I watched this very quickly was the 9th of Feb 2016. Mm, you can see a clip of this on our Twitter. You can, and our Facebook group. Yes, all details will be said at the end of the show. Jay got a storyline. Very oh. rare appearance, this. He has one a year. Yeah. He's met a girl called Star in the cafe. He's <laughs> drinking a milkshake. Star sounds inconspicuous. <laughs> From Ackley Bridge fame. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She's best friends with Louise, Bex and Shaquille in real life. They're still friends to this They day. are. They post loads of things on Instagram. They're drinking together. Wasn't they? her on-screen Young people. On, on, on screen mum also now known as Karen? She was. Yeah. She was... She was the landlady of a rival pub, mm-hmm. I think, at the Feathers. Yeah. And she was at the Vic getting drunk, doing a darts match. That's and it, it was Karen. So 2016, she arrived in 2017. So it wasn't a big... Really weird, isn't it? ...gap between characters. Um, and we also have the start of one of the most brilliant friendships to grace the screen. We should just say that Jay basically ends up having a relationship with her. And he does. you find Her out name's she... not really Star. And you find out that she's underage. Yes. And so then Jay gets convicted as being a paedophile. Mm-hmm. And he's on the list. Sex offenders list. Yeah, still on it to this day. He will be for the rest of his life. Lola don't care. She's all right. Lola don't care. She's got neon underwear. Don't care about anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, Abby... Is um she's got a neck brace on because she's <laughs> pretending that she's got a bad neck to make Ben feel sorry for her. <laughs> yeah. Because it's Abby. Um, and the friendship between her and Aunt Babe begins because she offers to aunt, uh, help Aunt Babe in the kitchen and she notices that um she doesn't like her older sister Lauren who does um and Aunt Babe relates to that because she doesn't like her older sister Sylvie. Sylvie, yep. And um so she thinks I'm going to take you under my wing, Abby. Hmm. And Abby's talking about how um, her phone goes off and Ab- Aunt Babe's like, oh, is that your boyfriend, Ben? She was like, oh, no. And then she looks over and she sees Ben's texting and then Paul's phone goes ah. off. And Aunt Babe works out that he's gay and cheating on Abby. So this is where the big friendship slash rivalry begins, where she fakes her pregnancy. Oh, yeah, She locks yeah. her in a freezer and all sorts goes on. No, Aunt Babe pushes her over, so then she loses the pregnancy. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's and She great. learns loads of manipulating ways from Aunt Babe mm. to be the great character that she could have been. Which is what she, exactly, which is why it's, to this day, we protest and say that Abby should never have died mm. on that roof. Abby's death is one of the most 
ridiculous. It's worse. It's not than, ridiculous. It's, it's the, worse wasted. than Roxy and Ronnie. Yeah, it was a wasted opportunity for a mm-hmm. character because they could have really made Abby. She had so much growing inside of her. She she could have been a Janine, in my opinion. Mm. I really do. And think. the actress was really good. Mm. And she's been an actress since she was like a child. Yeah, and she's still an actress. She's not. No offense to. <laughs> Jacqueline. Um, Jacqueline Doster. Queen of the Jungle. Yeah, well, exactly. And that makes my point. She basically went on to take the reality route mm. while Lorna Fitzgerald... And do adverts on Instagram. Yeah, and Lorna Fitzgerald is truly, like, honing Theater. her art. Yeah. But she does want to do Strictly. Oh, yeah. So she Why might not? do a, she might do a reality show one day. That's classy enough, though. Class. I'd do Strictly. Would you do Strictly? No. There we go. But you would do I'm a Celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, so you're Jacqueline Josser and I'm Lorna Fitzgerald. That's right. Perfect. I'll do adverts on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, to be fair, so would I. Um, so thank you. That was what uh, happened in previous weeks on The Square. But who won this week? You were given four stories and you could have voted on our Twitter, Instagram and our Facebook group. And the four stories were Ian Betrays Bobby. Yeah, that was good. But not good, but good. Cool. Linda Anonymous. Yeah, I'm worried about that now, so... I won't say it's good. I'll say no. Ikra in the middle. Ikra. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Forgot that happened. The Suki story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk yeah. quite long about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> and Leo's peekaboo. No. Oh, okay. Um, so Leo t- never wins on these votes. All right. That's your decision, is it? Well, he's he's only won one so far, and he's had a lot. Okay, so in fourth place. Uh, with 14% was Icar in the middle. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so the next three are actually very tight. Ooh. In third place was Linda Anonymous with 25%. That's gone down. Second place was Ian because Betrays of your face, Bobby. Yeah, it's be Ian, 29%. So Leo's, Leo's Peekaboo, obviously the Whitney story, was first place. Oh my goodness. I, I think everyone, you must have seen on Twitter, everyone loved the reveal of his eye. That's true. Coming out of the hole. <laughs> Not literally dangling out of the hole. <laughs> Hollyoaks effect is working. Yep, 32% of the vote. Ooh, but as I say, it was very tight. Between first and second, it was 3%. So very Wins tight a win. indeed. A win is a win. Some comments about this week. Uh, first of all, about Ian and Bobby. Beth and Davis on Facebook said, It didn't feel justified for Ian to become so nasty so quickly. If Bobby had also been shouting the odds, then fair enough. But he was being comp- comparatively calm, which made Ian's reaction seem a bit overblown. Yeah, but Ian's always like a big baby child, isn't he? So <laughs> he is. It's to be expected. That's true. At Erica MacD1612 says, Ian left Lucy to constantly watch Bobby and caught them. The cause of that was that she was too protective over him and more like a second mum ian was a redacted dad redacted obviously this naughty word i'm not going to say because he threw lucy (laughs) rubbish yeah rubbish dad because he threw lucy out for no reason and caused her to turn to drugs Drugs. Mm. (laughs) did you you finish that sentence for me did you no i just know that she turned to drugs it's amazing how much i don't know about lucy actually because i only watched it when she was dead (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and like when she was a child i never missed like the teenage lucy oh you missed the good teenage mutant lucy. Mm. the actress who got fired oh yeah for licking a lolly for licking a lolly a bit suggestively she was great it's a mm. shame she got fired at mark noon no, she's tw- dead now well, not the actress the i was gonna say she's had a baby or she's having a baby i know the actress not the not the character <laughs> at mark noon and 12 said the words ian used was justified to a degree but will damage bobby even more it wasn't justified he's the dad he should be better okay. like max well, Simone Francis said, um, Bobby is actively showing everyone he is changing, but Ian is under no obligation to forgive him. Yeah, but he should also try and understand. Uh, Kathy needs to go to Samaritan training and sit them both down and have a little chat. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, a couple of comments about Linda and Mick. Ron Monterio on Facebook says, seeing Ollie on the roof alone was so scary. I know others have said it, but tonight I'm convinced Linda is the big anniversary death. I thought about Ollie on the roof, Vic Roof. They Ollie on the roof. <laughs> he's doing... <laughs> Ollie on a hot tin roof. Um, they still haven't locked that door. Yeah, I know. You think deaths. the safety and also the roof was um not wasn't under regulation no. approved, was it? It had a hole just in sun it. Decks and all sorts. I mean, everyone, anyone could just get up on that roof. <laughs> Bailey uses that roof for a telescope. Mm. I said that a bit strange. Telescope. <laughs> Angeli Kerr says on Facebook, "Damn, Linda's alcohol storyline was annoying at the start, but I totally forgot about Linda's rape and cancer struggle. It just goes to show there is a breaking point even for a strong woman." Oh, yeah, that's when Shirley was like showering her and drowning her, and she was shouting at her, saying, "You're not the only woman who's yes. gone through this." But, but... Sorry, my microphone is being attacked by the cat. That's why there's noise. Cat. about uh, Whitney and Leo story Melanie Williams said I'm struggling to get to grips with Whitney her decision making skills are just the worst at the times and Matt Cherry said Leo's duff duff was the creepiest ever 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 I don't know Trevor Short had a duff duff once that was creepy Trevor Short <laughs> just because it was Trevor Short when he fell into the bins <laughs> 
Uh, right. So we had a question sent to us on Twitter. Oh, yeah. It was from at Born Slippy 96. Mm-hmm. And uh, should we answer it? Do you fancy it? Yeah, you it depends what it is. Game? Well, let's have a go. He wrote, or she wrote. Sorry, I don't want to presume your gender. And they had... Like uh, God. Call him he, if he. you don't know. Okay. Like God. A bit behind. So not sure if you've discussed or not already, but with all the debate going on at the moment over the government's plans for the license fee, I thought that maybe on this week's show, you two could discuss how a license fee free BBC could affect EastEnders future. It's literally all I think about any time everyone mentions the license fee. I'm like, yeah, abolish it. Down with the fee. Then two seconds later, I'm like, oh, wait, will we still get the shiny new Queen Vic set? So yes, fellas, a discussion is to be had. Now, before you have your view, mm. I just want to explain to any viewers outside the uk who don't understand how the bbc is funded i'm sure you will do I'll do it quickly just quickly <laughs> to go over it then is that it's a publicly funded station by us by not just me and ben by the whole of the uk yeah. and we publicly fund it by a license fee and it's around about was it 130 pounds a year don't i don't do it you do it suffice, <laughs> suffice to say it's cheaper than netflix although we do pay it which is more than some people do well, because we don't want to get a fine. Mm. They would turn up at your house, apparently, if you don't pay it. Mm. Sharon we... and Pat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, Sharon... Pat Butcher turned up. Oh, the house. characters of EastEnders. I would deliberately not pay it. And they go, can you imagine if Sharon turned up and said, give me a thousand pounds, that's your paid. fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and basically, um, the, uh, there's a big discussion at the moment whether the BBC should still be funded in this manner or whether they should become an advertising revenue or it should be a subscription base so you choose to pay it or not. Hmm. there we go that's 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 the history of what's going I on i have thought about this like what would happen to eastenders mm. like i can imagine if there's more cuts i mean they're making the set so there's no going back on that so eastenders isn't going to get cancelled for like at least 10 15 years because they've made the set mm. they wouldn't do that set and then cancel the show it would be very wasteful yeah so that's one thing that you'd have to worry about and what's more they could make money from the tours on the old set oh yeah go. oh totally 100 <laughs> percent once I'd, no, okay, that's I'd sleep there I'd sleep on Arthur's bench overnight oh yeah that'd be nice mm. that'd be a nice experience they could do extra 20 pounds <laughs> it's camp off on the set <laughs> but like I do wonder like there's options like if they cut funding to EastEnders it could turn to a daytime soap yeah which would be awful <laughs> really awful have you, have you seen Doctors the worst thing ever. <laughs> um, it could become like casualty like once a week mm. which i'm not here for but that's fine they have to just reduce the cast back to like the original amount of cast like they moved casualty in Ho- holby city to which, which are episodic so they're, they're, they are they are continuing soaps, dramas they're, they're continuing drums because they're on once a week they've moved them and they i believe they're filming scenes in wales for those now or one of them they film in wales mm. now i'm not entirely sure and i think that was because of cuts as well that was just to reduce the the cost of making the show i mean the other thing obviously it could be online only like iplayer and like netflix style so if you pay the license fee well like bbc3 is now yeah you get to watch eastenders mm. so i guess then it would be they'd upload a whole week at once mm, maybe and you'd watch it all in one or would they reduce the amount of episodes like that could be a reason for people to keep paying every month yeah. for the subscription because eastenders is always on mm. so i guess they could do that but it would change the way the show is made i guess it would be more of a binging show i mean if, if the bbc did become a subscription only service i think that the transmission as, as we know it now would be completely different and as mm. you say i think it would be an online service um they, they'd, they'd all go up on a friday like four episodes that's right there'll be four episodes all at once and there'll be yeah but, but, but though netflix do release episodes that's episodically true. um on their own platform it could be a way to get people like mm. them to say you pay 7.99 a month mm. But there's a new episode of EastEnders every day and a new episode of Doctors every day. Yeah, so yeah. So it gives you, you better to keep watch it. subscribed. I mean, you have to remember. And I mean, I am I'm happy to pay for the BBC license fee because I think for the for the value of it, it's it's personally I think it's worth it. Um, and ultimately, it is cheaper than Netflix. And it's cheaper than any other subscription service like Sky or Virgin over here in the UK. And you don't get commercials, which is a nice little bonus. So if the BBC did become a commercial channel, and so they had to fight and compete in order to get people to watch, then I think you'll see EastEnders as a very different show. And I think it would stop being the restraints that perhaps the EastEnders seems to have still at the moment, maybe light, lifted slightly. Because if you look at Coronation Street, they they tend to do a bit more, or they had been in the past been doing a bit more sensationalist stories. Mm, and they spend a bit more gosh on it too. Well, they could, so long as they're getting a good rating to match it. I mean, EastEnders, again, there's a lot of criticism saying that their ratings are going lower, but that's for the transmission. If you look at iPlayer 
ratings as well. iPlayer is the catch-up service in, uh, for the BBC. Its ratings are actually on parallel to Coronation Street in the UK. Just. Just, but still there. So they're yeah. getting, you know, Coronation Street's ratings aren't the big, huge numbers that they used to get mm. either. I think Emmerdale's are really low, even though they keep winning awards. It's mm. weird. Yeah, but, you know, there's no account for taste. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so, but, but you know, I think nowadays, if a soap gets around about five, six million viewers, that's seen as a triumph. Um, mm. And uh, Coronation Street hasn't been unheard of for big stories in the in recent years to getting um, up to the 10 million. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so I mean, I don't know. But going back to whether the, if they became a non-profit, uh, if they became a commercial network channel system, I mean, the BBC in itself would become a completely different structure. Like, they wouldn't have any as many mm-hmm. outlets as they have now. I wonder if they would just cancel EastEnders. I don't think they would, because it's it's a populist show still. Mm. And it's still seen as a popular show. I don't know how much BBC actually care. Like they've done no promotion for the 35th. Like no trailer, no advert. They they no do. Promo, I think they no, do like, do promotion. special shots. Not really. Well, they they, they for did... Dracula they did like an amazing thing and it flopped. Yeah, but Dracula's ah uh, yeah yeah. But you're missing the point there. Dracula was being sold to a worldwide audience. They saw that as a that was shown. Yeah, a Thames boat party can be sold to worldwide <laughs> audience. Dracula was show, was sold to Netflix outside the UK, which is why in the UK we had every single episode shown back to back to back, so that that Netflix could release it as one big go. While with EastEnders, it's quite a quite a regional thing. I mean, it works best in the UK only, and I think it's that old argument is that, is the BBC looking at looking at a worldwide programming source now or are they looking at an insular or are they doing a mixture of the two should bbc be competing to netflix or should bbc be competing in its own market in the uk it's it's tricky but um that's a completely different story and a different matter for another mm. day hope yeah. that's sort of after your question board it could be. still work but i think the cast would just be reduced hugely and maybe just go to like an hour a week or mm. i think anyone who thinks that they're going to increase the number of episodes for EastEnders up to five are oh, are wishful yeah. thinking and then i hope they don't actually as well because i think also four is eastenders is half an hour whereas the mm. soaps are like 21 minutes so if you add up eastenders still has technically five episodes mm. that's true that's true four whole 30 minutes again because there's ones. no commercials yeah. there's no space missing the so there's enough content don't need more need less okay less three is more. episodes is the best i feel what monday thursday friday or monday, monday wednesday friday i would have done oh you say so you knock it into wednesday yeah every other day yeah but the original broadcast dates for eastenders when it started yeah, way about. back <laughs> no 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 it was a tuesday and a thursday i yeah, know and I think you should always stick to the Tuesday and the Thursday. No. <laughs> I, my show personally, <laughs> I what I want. personally i would just clear the schedule on a friday i would make it monday tuesday thursday and then make friday because friday is a very popular night for television in the uk friday and saturday nights tend to be quite good no, ratings like friday standards that's the big drift of episodes yeah, it means we can go out on a friday i don't go out we can go out on a friday <laughs> no, then. we out. can finally have a night out no. all right well um okay but um, so but again we'd be interested to know what your views is especially born slippy let us know what your view is um about the bbc what do you think the future of EastEnders perhaps would might be if the license fee was to be abolished? Interesting times ahead. We asked on our Facebook and our Twitter uh, a question about perhaps if Ross Russell Tovey was to join EastEnders. Unfortunately, we've run out of time to give the answer to that. However, we're going to store them. We're going to keep them and we're going to read them out next week. Um, perhaps maybe with another question as well. So be lots no, of questions. No, because they will run out of time for that question and then that will be next week. Just, Just have nice. that one for next week. But if any guy, if anyone has any we questions... Need to bank them. Bank like you. Weakest Link. <laughs> Don't reference that. <laughs> um, if any of like you guys... Like Deal or No Deal. <laughs> oh, I love Deal or No Deal. You have to bank them. The banker. No, you don't bank anything in Dilma. No, I don't know. I'm just trying to say bank. Don't them. don't try to pretend you know how a game is played. <laughs> I can go through the rules of Dilma. I'll do weakest link then. You have to bank him. The question. <sighs> yeah, but that's anyway. a really silly reference. No, we're really running out of time because we're talking. Well, you're gobbling on about Dilma, no Dilma. And- Week is length. Anyway, if you guys have any questions you want to send to us and you'd like us to answer on the show, please do send them to us on either our Twitter, which is at Wolford Weekly. On our Facebook group, all we have to do is search Wolford Weekly and we'll come up and you can click to join. Or our Instagram, which is at Wolford Weekly Podcast. You can also email us or find our YouTube channel. All the details is on our website, which is wolfordweekly.com. As always, thank you for joining us. We always enjoy your company. Hope you all have a nice week. Don't get up to too much trouble. Don't work too hard. (laughs) Going to say goodbye or just going to carry on saying words? And goodbye. I'm just going to edit it all out. Bye, everyone.